Hey everyone, I'm Jordan Spivey along with my dad. Travis Spivey. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our science tutorial videos. In today's video, we will discuss the parts and importance of the cell membrane. So, so let's, let's do, do this. Our learning target for today is, I can identify and explain how the components of the cell membrane help the cell maintain homeostasis. It is important to note the cell membrane goes by several names, which include the plasma membrane, phospholipid bilayer, and the fluid mosaic model. All of these words are interchangeable and relate to the exact same thing, the cell membrane. So don't let these words trick you. Also, all cells contain cell membranes. It doesn't matter if it's a prokaryotic or eukaryotic cell, it will contain a cell membrane. Now the main function of the cell membrane is to maintain homeostasis by controlling what can enter and leave the cell. Remember, homeostasis means to have a stable internal environment and that's exactly what the cell membrane does for the cell by controlling what comes in and out of the cell. Think about who you will and won't allow into your home. And just like that, you are also a cell membrane ready to maintain homeostasis of your home. Some of the other functions of the cell membrane include giving shape to the cell, allowing transportation of materials in and out of the cell, and carrying out metabolic reactions near the inner surface of the cell membrane. Now that we have some background knowledge, let's explore the different parts of the cell membrane. The cell membrane is largely composed of lipids for proteins spread throughout. These lipids are known as the phospholipid bilayer, which basically means it has two layers. The phospholipids have a hydrophilic order repelling head and two hydrophobic order repelling tails. The head of a phospholipid is made of an alcohol and phosphate group, while the tails are chains of fatty acids. Phospholipids can also allow water and other nonpolar molecules to pass through into or out of the cell. This is known as simple diffusion because it does not require energy, and the water or molecules are moving from a high concentration to a low concentration. Cholesterol is another type of lipid that plays a huge role in the cell membrane. It helps make the membrane more fluid and adds to its flexibility in movement. Cholesterol is what helps give the cell membrane the name fluid mosaic model. Cholesterol does this by keeping enough space between the hydrophobic tails while bringing the hydrophilic heads closer together. This brings us to cholesterol's most important function, which is reducing the permeability or ability of certain materials to pass through the cell membrane. Basically, cholesterol packages the phospholipids very close together, which prevents certain materials from just passing through the cell membrane. It's almost like a group of people coming close together to protect whatever important materials that are on the inside of their home from possible stranger danger. The cell membrane also includes proteins as we discussed earlier. There are several specific proteins for specific functions but for simplicity. The proteins are in use to help get materials through the cell membrane or helps recognize each other and specific molecules. Proteins called transport proteins go all the way through the phospholipid bilayer or cell membrane. They do exactly what they say they do help transport materials through the cell membrane in and out of the cell. When the transport happens without energy, it is known as passive transport, specifically facilitated diffusion because the materials are moved from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration with the help of transport proteins. Large molecules like lipids or carbohydrates use proteins to help move across cell membranes as well. It is important to know that larger molecules like glucose and charged molecules like ions cannot simply pass through the phospholipid bilayer. They must get assistance in order to pass. Lastly, some of the membrane proteins have carbohydrate chains called glycoproteins attached to help cells recognize each other and certain molecules. In summary, the cell membrane, aka known as the phospholipid bilayer, plasma membrane, or the fluid mosaic model includes three major components. The phospholipid bilayer, proteins, and cholesterol that largely work together to help the cell maintain homeostasis. Without these working in harmony with one another, any and everything could enter and exit the cell which would definitely create a bad environment for the cell. Think about any and everyone being able to enter and exit your home. Thank goodness for these components of the cell membrane and their awesome collaboration skills. And that's our video for today. Now let's test your knowledge to see how proficient you are with identifying and explaining how the components of the cell membrane help the cell maintain homeostasis. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code at the bottom right of the screen, or you can click the link in the description box below the video. Remember, 80% or higher for a proficiency sheet, record your associate proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you, you better, better keep going because, because it's not over until you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also click that bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our awesome videos. 
Peace and have a positive, productive day. Move, Captain. I won't ask a second time.